again for episode two of season two of the Bedrock Guide, working on clearing out some land here because we need to get this area prepared for the project we're going to be working on today. I've been doing a little bit of resource gathering in between episodes, and I moved my campfire, bed, furnace, crafting table, and we even got a chest over here so we can start getting organized. And we're gonna do it right this time. This season, I promise, I'm gonna keep my stuff organized for at least three episodes. But we're not talking about organization today, we are talking about farming, and before we get to farming, I just wanna say a humongous thank you for the amazing outlandish support of episode one of the guide. I'm recording this the night of the release, of episode one and 1.18, and it is just blowing my mind how much you guys are loving season two so far. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy this episode just as much. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Be sure to click the bell, turn on notifications, and tell all your friends and family that Blue Jay is back for season two. Well, that was a close call. Um, creeper explosion right there. Can confirm, no deaths. We did survive the encounter, uh, but he did get a little angry or overexcited, depending on how you like to look at it. Uh, right up top there, that's where our campsite is. I found this little cave underneath where our campsite is located, and there's some decent resources in here. We're gonna get a little bit more coal. Uh, more importantly, we've got some iron down here. We're gonna need some iron for the next part of our project today because we are working on farming. When I say we're working on farming, I mean more than just carrots and potatoes. I mean crops and livestock. That's right, we'll get some carrots. We'll get some potatoes, we'll get some wheat, but we're also gonna go after some cows and sheep and maybe some pigs. We need to start diversifying our resources so that we can have plenty of food to go on adventures and start working on some bigger projects in the not so distant future. We've got some more things to do before we start working on building, but we will get there soon enough. We've got plenty of coal to last us a good while now, and we've got five iron here. That's not quite enough to do much with, but we're gonna go ahead and smelt it all into iron ingots. And while we're waiting on our iron to smelt, we're gonna go ahead and punch all of this grass because there's a decent chance that you will get some wheat seeds from punching grass. I don't mean grass blocks. Don't start breaking those. You're not gonna get it from that, but this little tall grass right here, uh, just punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it, and eventually, there you go, you'll get some seeds, and we can plant those for some wheat. That is going to be our primary goal to start out with because we need wheat to lure some cows and sheep over here. Now that our iron is done smelting, we'll place three iron ingots in a triangle, just like that, to grab a bucket. Unfortunately, we don't have enough to make two buckets right now, but we're gonna go over here where there is a gigantic water source. We got a nice little bay out here with our spruce forest, our birch forest. We got a lot of different options around here for wood types but we are interested in this water right here. We're gonna grab that, we're gonna take it back up, and we're gonna take this water source and we're gonna place it right here. Now that's not really gonna do anything for us because if we pick it back up, it's just this is gonna go away. It's gonna go into our bucket. But nice little magic trick with Minecraft. Minecraft does not follow real world logic when it comes to water sources. We can scoop up another bucket of water. And if we skip this block and place the next water source right here, it will create an infinite water source. So we can just pull from here and it will fill back in. And then we can pull from here again, and it'll fill back in. We will get all of the water that we need without having to go back and forth, back and forth from here to the lake. And so we'll take this up here and we'll find a good spot to put our first water source. And I think maybe we'll go ahead and plop it down right here. This spot seems like as good as any. We need to be very careful of this guy over here once we start getting livestock up here because he is a hunter and he might go after our sheep. We definitely don't want that to happen. We're gonna craft a tool that didn't have much use use early on in the Minecraft days, but it has great use these days, uh, far beyond what we're about to use it for, but this is the stone hoe, and we can go ahead and do boop, 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 just like that, and this is called farmland. On our farmland, we can place down seeds for growing wheat, or we can place down things like potatoes and carrots and beetroot. We can even place down pumpkin seeds and melon seeds and grow those types of things as well. A lot of different things that you can farm in Minecraft, an important thing to note about the water source, uh, it does saturate the farmland. You can see that this just got a little bit darker and it extends four blocks in 
each direction. So we can go one, two, three, four, and this block right here will become saturated. And then we can go one, two, three, and four, and all of those blocks will become saturated. So essentially, we can place our wheat seeds down on each of these little farmland blocks, and we can wait for them to grow. Another interesting trick that we can put in place right here is putting a stair down and waterlogging the stair. That way, we can keep our water source in place, but then we don't have to worry about walking over it and falling down in. And that way, when we jump back up, we don't end up breaking the crop. So let me just show you this for example. If we jump up and down, it's going to break the farmland. The seed's going to pop up and it's going to be no good. We're going to have to start all over. So we'll go ahead and till the soil. We'll get our farmland. We'll plant our seeds and we'll go take a snooze. The great thing about Minecraft physics and the way things work, uh, water sources will spread four blocks in each direction. So not only will they spread four blocks in this direction, they will spread four blocks in this direction. So we can have multiple rows of wheat growing at the same time, all off of one single water source. So you remember those carrots and potatoes that we got in episode one from the village? We're going to put them to good use. We've actually burned through all but two carrots, so it's going to take a little while to replenish those. Uh, but we're going to place a carrot down here and a carrot down there because this is going to be a wheat row. And as long as we have alternating crops, it does not slow down the growth process. Then we can go here and we can go here and we can place potatoes just like that. But we have more than two potatoes, so we'll just go down the line and fill it up until we run out. We actually might have some left over. Yeah, we've got three left over. So we've got a little miniature farm growing here, and that's going to get us a source of food, not just for ourselves, but for our livestock as well. So those are going to take a few minutes to grow, and I'm going to grab our sugar cane. This is slightly different to the growth mechanic of these crops. So for example, one water source, we can plant a potato or a wheat seed all the way over here and it'll grow just fine as long as we have farmland. However, with sugarcane, it has to be planted directly next to a water source. Uh, I'm clicking the button right here and nothing's happening. So you have to plant sugarcane directly next to water sources in order for it to grow. And that just means we need to dig a little trench like this and we'll go back over and grab one more water source and we'll do exactly what we did with that water source right there. We're going to create an infinite water source by skipping that block and placing water right there and then we don't have to go back over there minecraft is all about finding the tricks and tips to save yourself some time so that you're not running all over the place those of you that are here from bg season one don't you even say anything i know i used to do that i know you i know i run all over the place we're not doing it this time so one two three four five six sugar cane we're gonna wait for these to grow sugar cane can grow three tall they don't grow any taller than that on their own naturally and so once they grow to three tall we'll come by we'll break them and we'll get some more it looks like we've got our first couple of fully grown wheat so we'll go ahead and break this with our hand and we'll get one wheat and one seed back and we can replant that and grow some more then we can go over here and break this one and we'll get one wheat and two seeds back so this is how you gain a surplus of seeds and we can save this for more wheat or we can save it for chickens because chickens love to eat seeds we have what we need to keep going while we're waiting on more crops to grow so we're gonna make a bunch of fences here and i've already pre-crafted some carpets but just in case you don't know how you take some wool in a one by two orientation like that and then you can grab some carpets and we're just gonna start setting up a few animal pens. I haven't seen very many of you. Come with me, please. Uh, if you got wheat in your hand, they are interested. If you walk away a little too quickly, they become disinterested. If you let go of the wheat, they're like, hey, where's the beef? No, 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 where's, where's the wheat? And then they try to walk away. So we're gonna chop this open right here and bada bing, bada boom, we'll grab our wheat again. He should become interested. Oh, there's another cow. This is perfect. We need another cow. Come on, let's go, buddy. We've got two cows and this could not have worked out better. In the last episode, I walked around for like 10 minutes and I couldn't find a single one. Now we've got two. Come on in, come on in. Let's go, buddies. No, 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 no. Come back around here, thank you. Let's go. Perfect. They're home, and we're going to lock themselves and ourselves in. And I guess that's the end of the Bedrock Guide, because I can't get out of here now. 
That's why we've got our carpets here. We can take one carpet and place it in the corner, and maybe we'll put another one in this corner. And these cows, they just consider that a full block. They can't get out, they can't do anything with it, but we can jump and get on top of our fences. That's an easy way in and out of your animal pens without having to use fence gates. I may actually move this over to the center just uh, because I want to. There we go. So we've got a couple of cows in there. We've got wheat. We're growing some more and it's growing pretty rapidly and we'll go ahead and go boom. Uh, he's got some love hearts and then boom, uh, there's some more love hearts and then we should get a baby cow. Now our two have become three. That cow will grow up into an adult cow. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but we can shorten that time by giving him some more wheat. So any of the wheat that we've already got grown over here, we can harvest and put it towards our cow farm that we've got in the works. I've got seven more wheat and we're gonna target just the baby cow. We're not gonna feed them again just yet. And we'll go boom, 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 grow, do it, please. Ah, he's not hungry enough or he's, he's too hungry. Ah, we gotta wait. Okay, we're gonna wait on some more wheat, but that drastically cut down on the time it's gonna take for him to grow up. He may even grow up uh, before we get some more wheat, but that's how you grow up a cow from baby to adult if you're a little impatient and don't wanna wait. Don't grow up too fast, kids. I got two more wheat. Are you ready? Are you, are you, are you ready? Come here, bud. Just you, not the adult ones. Boom. Boom. Hey, there we go. We've got an adult cow. So we've got three of them now. We can breed up these cows again and get another baby cow and kind of repeat the process and just continue expanding the amount of cows that we have in our starter farm. We've got some more things that are fully grown now. These carrots, for example, we'll go ahead and break them and we get three in return. So we can go one, two, and three and continue growing our carrot supply. This is what early game farming is all about. It is about planting, breaking, replacing, and planting the surplus until your entire farm is filled. Once it is filled, you can start saving some things back for yourself. For example, here we go, potatoes. We'll go ahead and break these and we'll get some excess potatoes. We need to make sure that we are breaking the fully grown ones only. If you break the ones before they're fully grown, uh, you won't get the extra potatoes and you only get the one back that you planted. So here we go, we've got here and here and here and here and we can replant all of these. But because we started out with full potatoes in the farm, now we have a surplus of 16 potatoes that we can put towards cooking. And now we've got some baked potatoes and yet another source of food. Great thing about Minecraft food is that it does not go bad. So our cooked beef, our cooked chicken, our cooked pork chops, baked potatoes, all of that stuff, even though it's already been cooked and sitting there for a while, it does not spoil. We can come back to that months from now and eat that and it'll be just fine. Boop, boop, no, 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 stay in there. Stay, no, oh, come on. Come on, buddy. You wanna live here, it's a great, it's a great home. It's nice and spacious, kind of. Nope, stop it. Come back, sheep, and you're trapped. Thank you. So as I mentioned before, cows and sheep are both drawn by wheat. If we wanna get some pigs, we're gonna to have to use something a little bit different. One thing you need to know about Minecraft if you are new or returning to the game, Minecraft has an unspoken rule. If you are looking for something, you're never gonna find it. When we were looking for sheep, we couldn't find sheep. When we were looking for cows, we couldn't find cows. Now we're looking for pigs and they're nowhere to be found. But look, we got sheep here, we got sheep there, we got sheep everywhere, no pigs. Pigs, where are you at? If we can find some pigs anywhere in this vicinity, uh, we'll lure them back here into another pen with some carrots, just like we did with wheat for sheep and cows. They will follow right along. There's a cow, there's a cow, no pigs. Oh, 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 I don't know if you can see it. I just saw it over here, over here, over here. Hey, there we go. There's a piggy boy. Come on, let's go. We're gonna go back to your brand new home. We need to find you a, uh, a friend. Uh, so that we can make some more pigs, but you'll do just fine for now. Uh, that'll do, that'll do pig. There you go, you wanna live here. You, you are eager, you're excited. Let's go, let's find a friend for you. I haven't found another pig yet, but I found two chickens, so come along with me, please. Now, I don't have a home for these guys just yet, but I'm thinking maybe we could place them right here in a little, a little bit smaller of a pen. They don't need anything too big. You look like you're ready to go, let's go. We'll block you off right there. We'll get your friend over here. Come on, buddy. Okay, maybe we need to bump you over because you're getting in the way. Come on, come on in. Just walk through the doorway. Just walk through the door. And then we'll place a carpet right there. And maybe we'll do a carpet right there just for symmetry purposes. 
Eh, great. We've got our cow farm. We've got our sheep farm. We've got half a pig farm. And we got a chicken farm. It's taken quite a while, but it looks like we finally got some sugar cane growing. So we'll go ahead and break that. And same thing that we've been doing with the rest of these crops. We'll place another one down and wait for it to grow. And we'll fill up this entire area around the water sources. And hopefully we'll get a decent amount of sugar cane out of that. Just gotta find one more pig and we should be good to go on livestock. Now don't you give me any trouble like your chicken friends over here. Come on in, there we go. All right, we'll trap you in here. I mean, we'll, we'll seal you in and nice and safe into your brand new home. And now we have a completed farm. So what I want to do now that we've got a full set of every kind of animal that we want in our farm, we're going to harvest our crops, replant them until all of those are full. And then we're going to start feeding these guys until we have at least more than two. I, I kind of want to keep at least three of each animal just in case we lose one. We don't have to go hunting for one again and dragging them back over here. What we do want to be careful of, though, is this right here. These guys are bumping into each other. This is called a collision. Collisions can actually be a little bit of a pain if you're not careful. If we got like 50 pigs, 50 chickens, 50 cows, 50 sheep, all in that small, tiny space right there, there's going to be a lot of collisions going on, a lot of data to update in the world files, and that could start causing some lag issues. Definitely don't want to do that to ourselves. Yeah, we might want to do it to Prowl, but we'll be nice, I guess. Yo, Blue Jay, how'd you get all those animals? That's a great question. Let me show you. Now, we just got done talking about collisions and hitboxes and things like that. This is about as much as I'd want to do for the moment until we can spread these guys out a little bit farther. This will be fine. You can see I'm moving around just fine. No lag. It's not causing any problems. But let's show you really quick how we breed up these different types of animals. Well, first and foremost, chickens, uh, they lay eggs and we've got a few laying on the ground here. We can go and toss one, toss one, toss one. I I'm so sorry. We'll toss another one. There we go. If we toss them enough times, eventually we're going to get a baby chicken out of some of these eggs. But another way to get chickens is with seeds. We can go and take an adult chicken and another adult chicken and feed them both. You get the love hearts and bada bing, bada boom, we have another chicken spawn on and outside the chicken pen. Why don't you want to go in there? It, it's really cozy. Cows are the exact same way. You take wheat, you take wheat, and bada bing, bada boom, another baby cow brought into the world. And sheep, also like cows, take wheat and wheat, and we've got a baby sheep. And last but not least, pigs. This is the interesting one. Pigs not only will take carrots to breed, they will take uncooked potatoes as well. So these guys will respond to two different food sources. That is very unique. None of these other three animals will do that. Let's talk about drops for a second. We already talked about eggs and we don't have to do anything for those. They just kind of stand there and eggs appear because that's how that works, right? If we go over here and, uh, you know, tap, tap a chicken on the head just really gently, uh, we'll get some chicken meat and every once in a while they will drop feathers as well. Over here with our cow friends, we'll go ahead and gently tap them on the head as well and bada bing bada boom we have some raw beef and we get leather from cows as well leather can be used for a variety of things like armor we're gonna have to get some of that real soon i've got iron boots and I've got a gold helmet that I found off a zombie. We got to get some better armor. Leather is not necessarily better, but it is more useful than it used to be. And we'll talk about that in another episode. If we go over here to our sheep friends, we can go bada bing bada boom. And we'll pick up some raw mutton and we will pick up some white wool. The nice thing about sheep is if you're not really looking for a food source from these guys, if you got plenty of cows or chickens or, you know, wheat and you're going to eat some bread, or if you're going to be a vegan and eat some potatoes, you don't actually have to tap these guys on the head with your axe. All you gotta do is get some shears and you can shear the sheep. And in fact, I'm gonna use my last two pieces of iron right now to demonstrate this for you guys just because I like you and I'm glad you're here. We can take our shears and we can use the right click or use button and we can trim, 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 give these guys a nice haircut because uh, it's, it's summer out here. They must be hot and we can get as much wool as they will allow. As you can see, there's a bunch of dirt under there. That's because these guys have been grazing. When a sheep eats grass, it will remove the grass texture from the block and it will turn it into dirt until it grows back. And part of that process is eating the grass will allow their wool to grow back so we can get unlimited sources of wool. And back to these guys once again. 
They were very cool when it comes to breeding because they can eat carrots or potatoes. Uh, but as far as anything other than meat, they don't really do a whole lot. So we can go ahead and tap him on the head and we'll get some raw pork chops from our pig friends. No other drops from them. But one cool thing about pigs is that uh, before it was uncool to ride mobs, still waiting for my rideable dolphin, you can actually put a saddle on these guys and ride pigs around like a horse. Oh, it's amazing. Prowl and I made a pig race track in a previous series. Oh my goodness, it was so much fun. Riding pigs, definitely worth a try at least once. That's about all you need to know about farming for today's episode. Minecraft is a game full of farming. We're going to be doing a lot more farming in the weeks, months, years to come on this channel. We're going to get into some more automated processes because this is all manual. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of button clicking. We don't want to do all the button clicking. So this is a great first step. This is what you need to know so that you know how things work. And before we get into the next episode, I'm just going to keep on working on this area and getting my stockpiles of food so that we don't have to worry about that anymore. Guys, thank you so much once again for the humongous support in the last episode. I've got high hopes and expectations for Bedrock Guide Season 2, and you guys have already blown them away. You're awesome. Have a great day.